a very good morning to all of you all the distinguished panelists and my dear friends a very uh, this is really good that surya khan and eq magazine have organized this event here on solar energy the stakeholders in solar energy from karnataka and i'm sure from other parts of the country and the world are here the ambience in a energy conference is always very electric people are very excited about the opportunities which lie ahead the infinite possibilities the quick transformation that the sector is witnessing is truly amazing the kind of things which have happened in renewable energy and in solar are wonderful uh in karnataka now 50% of our installed capacity of power comes from renewable the new things which are happening are uh, uh, storage storage i think is going to be a big thing whether bat battery storage or uh, pump storage and if we can pair solar energy with storage then uh, it will be another game changer the way solar has been in the last decade or so uh we also have to work on decentralized solar parks in our state especially the focus has been on large solar parks as you are all aware karnataka has the world's largest solar park in pavagada a 2050 megawatt facility which is fully functional and is generating power almost at its full peak load only yesterday the recorded uh, load was 2050 megawatt from pavagad one solar plant alone so these uh, i mean solar energy it still continues to amaze me how without having any boilers or turbines or anything i mean the sunlight is falling on some inert material and the electricity flows i think it's a miracle that we are we are seeing in our uh, lifetime uh, the electric vehicle e mobility is another huge opportunity and there again if we can have solar powered electric charging stations then the need for fossil fuel for even mobility may come down significantly the fact that energy can be generated on rooftops otherwise our concept when we were growing up was that energy comes from large power plants which are centralized which are far off but now we can generate and consume energy virtually at the same location now these uh, exciting accomplishments and uh, endless possibilities uh, has made the unthinkable uh, really feasible but of course it has created a lot of challenges also because uh, renewable energy we, as we all know uh is intermittent it solar only happens during the solar period during the day time uh again there is some seasonality also to it but in spite of all that the the wonders that it has worked karnataka which was a deficit state until a few years back if it has become a surplus state it's largely because of the solar uh, influx just to give you some idea about the uh, the numbers uh of the 29996 megawatt of installed capacity that we have in the state 14863 almost 50% of it is coming from renewable and of this 1400 uh 7277 megawatts and counting is coming from solar alone we also have uh, wind uh, about 4818 uh, mini hydel cogeneration biomass all that so with all that the r rpo achievement i mean the renewable purchase obligation that the karnataka the government of india has uh, advised us to follow we are we have exceeded it by two times or more than that as against the rpo norm of 10.25% for non solar we stand at 17% for solar the rpo norm is about 6.75% we stand at 15% so 32% as against 17% obligation for 
having renewable in, in our source mix is something which is truly creditable. But of course, I mean, during some times of the year and some times of the day also, uh, the, we have surplus generation like our uh, peak solar, wind, major hydro and even if we operate the thermal capacity at the minimum because there's some statutory obligation, some plants have to run on bar, nuclear energy uh, enjoys the must run status. So on a good day, our generation is more than 15,600 megawatts but our maximum so peak load that we have uh, recorded so far is 13,000 and on average day it is only about 10 to 11,000. So theoretically, I mean we have surplus of almost 3,000 to 5,000 megawatts every day and yet it's not that we can do away with the uh, thermal or this thing. Uh, of course, if the solar comes or if the storage comes uh, and I, I, in my view, storage of even up to about 2,000, 2000 to 3,000 megawatts will uh, bring us to a stage where our dependence on uh, thermal uh, generation on fossil fuel will be only for contingencies, will only be for some balancing. Because we are also blessed with a lot of hydel capacity in our state. Unlike many other states, we have almost 4000 megawatts of hydel. And when I told you about this 50% of our installed capacity coming from renewables, hydel is not even part of that. So if you add hydel, which also is in, in many ways a renewable source, then we stand at 63% in the state. So how are we managing this peak load is, is uh, an issue before us. Uh, we have to back down on a lot of thermal capacity, which has its own problems because uh, then we have to pay the capacity charges, the fixed charges, and there's a stress on the thermal assets also if you do frequent ramping down and so on. The, we are availing a lot of uh, uh, thermal during non-solar period. So, and we are trying to maximize hydel also during the non-solar period. And one thing that we have done is that we have shifted our agricultural uh, load for irrigation uh, now to daytime during the solar period. Earlier, the uh, agricultural sector was mostly getting power during the night times and that also not uh, on a continuous uh, basis because we only provide seven hours of power supply for the agricultural pump sets, it's free power. But now because of solar, we have been able to shift it to the daytime for better peak load management and it has helped farmers also. So in view of this uh, intermittency and seasonality of the solar and uh, uh, generally uh, renewable energy, the, uh, the issues of uh, grid optimization, grid integration become very, very relevant. And uh, uh, these, these, these challenges of both in, term, in terms of generation as to how do we uh, uh, optimize the mix, how do we manage the, the surplus and the deficit uh, during different times. And there's unpredictability in uh, renewable. We never know what will be the wind speed on a particular day. Even if solar radiation to some levels can be predicted, the wind speeds can be highly unpredictable. Therefore, uh, one opportunity that lays before us is if we can have more accurate forecasting and uh, forecasting techniques for uh, renewable that will help us at least in planning our grid integration and grid management better. Transmission also we need to do a lot of work because uh, one of course is that we have invested a lot in the evacuation of this green power of the solar power. but. Uh, the optimization, I mean, it's not the utilization is not optimal. Uh, during non-solar period, all this capacity remains idle. So how do we balance that? How do we have the best mix of uh, optimization? And because of evacuation uh, constraints and transmission constraints, uh, the quality of power in some parts of the state is not as good. Uh, which will help us in increasing consumption because right now we want to increase consumption. We have surplus power. 
an increase in consumption is always good for the economy especially when it comes from green sources where the footprint also is lesser carbon footprint is lesser uh, increase in per capita consumption of energy always leads to increase in gdp increase in uh, improvement in the economy and so on so these challenges are something which we would like to work with the industry there has to be a collaborative response to these challenges uh, we need more innovation we need uh, more uh, research and development we need better skills uh, when it comes to people and so on so appropriate skill development has to happen uh, new business models uh, will have to be arrived at in view of this new scenario in the power sector the challenges which are before us are opportunities for the industry and and for the science fraternity so um, how to bring the storage costs down will be a big thing the way sol solar costs have come down generation costs once the storage costs also come down and if storage becomes affordable and like i said if we can pair storage with the renewable source of energy then uh, the the dependence on uh, uh, on thermal power can come down even further so these are these are some of the areas that uh, we will have to work on we are looking at now in uh, solar uh, field in uh, karnataka we want to work more on rooftops because although we have done well in terms of uh, large solar parks uh, but in terms of rooftop it is yet to take off the way it could have it should have so we we plan to work in collaboration with you on how to incentivize rooftop the consumer owned uh, rooftop model somehow hasn't taken off so now we are also thinking in terms of third party aggregation of rooftops uh, and uh, have more of decentralized generation and consumption we are also looking at mini solar uh, facilities in rural areas we already have a plan of having at least 20 megawatts of solar in all talukas so that it can be connected to the grid locally for agricultural load but now we are even thinking in terms of even small smaller uh, solar uh, solar facilities which can be connected to the grid and since we have achieved almost nearly 100% feeder segregation um so that for the agricultural feeders these small solar facilities again through third party uh, developer uh, uh, investment model the uh small solar facilities can be connected to the grid and that will really improve the quality of power and increase the consumption also so these are these are some of the areas that we are working on uh, we need to have a lot more ev charging infrastructure in bangalore almost 70 ev charging stations are now ready we already have uh, five uh, charging facilities which are functional uh, but they mostly in bescom uh, Uh, offices or in Vidhan Sabha, Vikas Sabha, and so on. But uh, to make it more accessible to people, uh, we are now working on uh, having more EV charging infrastructure, not just in Bangalore, but in tier two towns and uh, uh, along the main corridors as well. Uh, now, these these things uh, are something which I am sure you will be deliberating upon in uh, the next uh, what couple of days, or it's a one day event, one day event. yeah so i wish uh, the conference all success i'm sure you'll have meaningful deliberations you'll have smart solutions you'll have good participation and you will uh, work on the questions which are before us like where do we move next uh, do we need more solar more uh, renewable energy uh, to what level how much storage do we require what kind of storage should it be should it be battery storage should it be should it be pump storage how do we manage our uh, uh, fluctuating surplus and deficit scenarios how do we increase consumption how do we identify the constraints in our infrastructure um, now these are the areas where uh, which we will be very interested in in uh, learning and working with you on i am sure uh you will uh, work on these areas and uh, we will interact more closely on achieving our objectives thank you very much